Oh, yeah. Here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. Section 4.4, fractional exponents and radicals. Now, this might make some of you a little queasy to begin with, but again, it's all a process, seeing the patterns, recognize the patterns, do them enough, and it'll become easier and easier, okay? So, first of all, I just want to remind you of the exponent rules slash laws, right? So, here we have... Uh, if you're multiplying two numbers that have the same base, right? So that dot means times, right? So that's going to be, we got three twos here and you got five twos here. So it means you have two to the power of three plus five or two to the power of eight, right? That would be the multiplication law. Uh, we also have a power law here. So for example, if I had two to the power of three, all to the power of five, that would be two to the power of three. That's three twos five times. So hopefully you can see that this is three times five, which gives me two to the power of 15. Okay. And a third law here that you've seen in the past, say I had two to the power of five divided by two to the power of three. Okay. That's the same as writing it like this. Okay. Don't forget the basic stuff here, guys. Uh, these are the same, right? Division is represented by this line. A fraction is basically division, right? So this is two to the power of five. 2 to the power of 3, this means that you have 5 twos on top and you have 3 twos on bottom, bam, 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 it leaves you with 2 to the power of 2, which is 5 minus 3, 2 to the power of 2, okay? Exponent loss, don't forget them, all right? Now, the next thing, let's go down here. So, uh, yeah, so using that, I'd like you to think about this. If uh, I said to you, what would this be? Oh, stupid pencil. Look, 5 to the power of 1 half times 5 to the power of 1 half. Now, hopefully you can see that that's 5 to the power of 1 half plus 1 half, which is uh, 5 to the power of 1, which is just 5, right? Well, uh, that makes me think of something. What else do you know multiplied by itself would equal 5, right? Well, it happens to be the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which is the square root of 5 squared, which is 5. Okay, so I'm hoping that maybe you can make a connection here. And if you can't, I'm just going to give it to you. Okay, because here we go. This is how we deal with fractional exponents. Okay, if you have a fraction as an exponent, like this, for example, 5 to the power of 1 half, okay, n represents any number it could be a third a quarter a fifth a tenth okay that bottom number is your index so the two is your index the two is your index all right along with that then let's have a look at this right 27 to the power of one third right well that can be rewritten as three index 27 or the cube root of 27 okay which is just three okay um there are a lot of different questions that we can do here. Let's look at a couple more. What about if I gave you uh, 0 0.49 to the power of 1 half? Or if I gave you negative 64 to the power of 1 third? Or 4 ninths to the power of 1 half? Right? These are fractional exponents. Now the bottom is your index, so this is going to be the square root of 0 0.49. Notice that we don't actually need the 2 either, but hopefully um, it doesn't matter if I put it in there, okay? Bottom number is your index, so this is a cube root of negative 64. Cube root, if you looked at your list of cube roots, you'd see that it's got to be a 4, since it's a negative and you can do negatives in odd roots, right? So negative 64 cube root of becomes negative 4. Bottom number is your index. Now here we've got a couple things going on. Remember that the square root of a fraction is equal to the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. So we end up with 2 thirds, okay? And that's a fractional exponent, people. Now, what I'd like you to think about here as well is, let's look at these ones up here, maybe. So let's look, no, let's look at, I don't care which one we look at. Let's look at a new one. If I have 
16 to the power of 1 half. That ends up being the square root of 16, right? But where does the 1 go? I know that the, we know that the bottom is the index. Okay, we know the bottom is the index. But what does the 1 do? Where is the 1? You know, what happens if I have a different number up there? Well, where do you think that you could put the 1 in here? Okay. Remember that any number, x here, has a lot of numbers associated with it. There's a 1 in front, it's over 1, and it's got a power of 1. Okay? So, if I look at a number like 2, for example, there's not a 1 in front of the 2, but you can, okay, that would be 12, but it's over 1, and it's to the power of 1. Those are just numbers we don't write. So, where do you think this 1 could be if we don't write it? Well, if you sit up here, you're absolutely right. Okay, because uh, we don't write the 1. So look, this is actually kind of weird. This 16 to the power of 1 half is really just like this. You don't write the 2, and you don't write the 1. So it could be a little misleading at times, but what I'd like to show you here is what, for example, would be the answer if I said this. Um, hold on a sec, sorry. How about... 16 to the power of 2 thirds. What would that be? Right? Well, the bottom would be the top index here, right? And the 2 would be on the 16. So now you got a couple of things that you're doing. You're squaring the 16 and you're cube rooting the 16. Which one you do first really doesn't matter. Okay? It could be 16 uh, squared, and then you cube root the whole thing, which is that. Um, or you could just go uh, the cube root of 16 all squared. Now, I'm rambling a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you this right now. Okay, Let's have a look at this. What I was just trying to do is explain where we're going with this. And what you see now is that this bottom number becomes the index and the top number is on the radicand, okay? And what I was trying to show you here is that it doesn't matter if you uh, do this first or if you do the radical first, right? Remember the n out here is the one over n. So you can do this one first and then uh, square n it or n it, root it, or you can n root it and then empower it, all right? So I know this might be getting a little confusing. Let's look at a couple of different examples here, okay? If I was gonna ask you to do uh, the 40 to the power of 2 thirds, Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to do the cube root, that's on the outside, of 40 squared, right? The other way to look at this is uh, the cube root of 40 all squared, all right? Now, uh, that's harder to evaluate here. We're going to learn how to do this on our calculators, but what I'm going to do right now is try and uh, do something here. Let's look at 8 to the power of 4 thirds, let's say, okay? Now, I don't know what the hell that's going to equal, so why don't we see if we can split it up? Now, this is going to be the cube root of 8 to the power of 4. Now, can you do 8 to the power of 4? Right, that's a pretty big number, 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. I can do 8 times 8 is 64, times 8, I think might be 256, times 8. We're getting up into 1700s. I can't really know exactly that using my calculator. But my question to you would be, could you do the cube root of 8? Right? You know that the cube root of 8 is, hopefully you know, that it's 2, right? So this is going to be the same as saying now 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. And you're done, right? And what we can do is we can check it on our calculator. Uh, I'm doing 8 to the power of 4 thirds. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Your calculators are different than mine. But I can go 8 to the power of, and I can go 4 divided by 3. Oops, i got to create some. 8 to the power of uh, 4 divided by 3. And you end up with 16, right? Uh, what you could also do is the cube root of 8, get a number, and then power of 4 it. There you go. Now, um, these are obviously going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, you need to try as many of these as you want. Which way you choose depends on you, okay? Which one can you do? So let's look at 4 to the power of 3 halves, okay? Convert that first, and then we'll finish it off. Let's look at a few more here. I'll write them down. 27 to the power of 4 thirds. We have 
32 to the power of 0 0.4. What the heck do we do with that? We have 0 0.04 to the power of 3 halves. Ah! And then we have negative 27 to the power of 4 thirds. Okay? So let's start with these ones up here. 4 to the power of 3 halves. Bottom is the index, and it's 4 cubed. So you can do it a couple different ways here. You can say 4 cubed, right? 4 cubed to the power of 1 half. Or you can say the square root of 4 all cubed. And in either case, you're going to get the same answer, right? So 4 cubed is 64. And the square root of 64 is 8. Here, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. All right? In this case, I could do it both ways. Sometimes it's going to be easier. I think it's usually easier to root it if it's possible and then cube it, right? So let's rewrite this one again. 3 is the index and it's 27 to the power of 4. I definitely can't do 27 to the power of 4, but what I can do is the cube root of 27, right? Because I know that the cube root of 27 is 3 to the, and that's going to be to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 is. 81. Okay? This one, what's the problem with this? Hmm, well, what we need to be able to do, sure, you can do this on your calculator, all means, 32 to the power of 0.4. Boom, it's going to be 4. Okay? But you need to know how to do this without your calculator. And that's pretty easy if you remember how to convert this into a fraction, right? We want fractions, so convert it into a fraction. 0 0.4 is equal to 4 over 10. Reduce that, it's 2 over 5. Okay, so what we actually have is 32 to the power of 2 over 5. All right, so let's rewrite this. The bottom is the index, and then I have 32 squared. And again, not a chance in hell I'm going to be able to get this in my head, 32 squared. So what I'm going to do is the fifth root of 32 first, and then I'm going to square that. And I know that the fifth root of 32, I believe it's 2, 2 to the power of 1, uh, 4, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 3 is 8, 4 is 16, 5 is 32. So this is a 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. And isn't that what we got on our calculator? Okay. Now, almost done here, folks. A couple more examples. Hang in there. This is going to be the bottom is the index, right? So it's going to be 0 0.04 all cubed. Now, in this case, you could probably do both, but I think it's a little easier to see the square root of 0 0.04. If you remember talking about the multiplication of decimals, it has to be one decimal place, right? So it's going to be uh, 0 0.2 all cubed. And now if you're going to multiply 0 0.2 three times, this is what you get, right? You're going to get 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, which means you're going to have to have three decimal places, right? And it becomes 0 0.008. Not the funnest thing, folks, but hopefully you're getting a handle of this, all right? Negative numbers now. The 3 is on the bottom. Cube root of negative 27 to the power of 4. Not going to do negative 27 to the power of 4. But I can do the negative cube root of negative 27. Right? All to the power of 4. So that's going to be negative 3 to the power of 4, which is in the 81 again. Notice the similarity between these two. Okay, I think I've droned on long enough, folks. Have a look at a bunch of examples, and then we'll go... Oh, well, let's look at a couple points maybe I should make here. Uh, sorry, just a couple quick points here, okay, that uh, I want to remind you of if you want to. So here we are. you got to turn your decimals, uh, decimal, frac uh, decimal exponents into fractions. Okay, turn decimal exponents into fractions. Remember that anything to the power of zero 
or the power, yeah, power of uh, zero is equal to one. Okay, uh, those are two main things that I want you to remember. So uh, try the questions out of the book, folks, and we'll see how you do.